So in the sixth year after Hijrah, as in six years after the Prophet Sallallahu arrived in Medina. So Islam before that started in Mecca and it was in Mecca for 13 years. So for 13 years, the Prophet preached to the people of Mecca and eventually left Mecca after 13 years and came to Medina. So initial 13 years, then another six years of da'wah. So now we are on the sixth year after Hijrah. So sixth year after Hijrah, the Prophet ﷺ decided to expand the da'wah beyond his own borders, beyond his vicinity. So he ﷺ sent eight letters to eight different kings, kings from the Arab and the Ajam. And one of the kings he sent it to is Thumama ibn Uthal. Thumama is the Sayyid of Banu Hanifa. He is the leader of the tribe of Banu Hanifa in the areas of Najd. And he reigned over a place called Yamana. And he was a man authoritative enough. People had gathered around him enough, were obedient to him enough to warrant a letter from the Prophet because the Prophet ﷺ didn't send the letter, he only sent eight letters. And Thumama was one that qualified to receive a letter as a monarch, as a leader, as a king from the Prophet ﷺ. And when the letter came, his ego and his, you know, prior programming took the better of him and he rejected the invite of the Prophet ﷺ. And not only that, he killed the messenger of the Prophet ﷺ. And the fire of hatred burnt so much inside him. Because how do I explain this? You know, cultures differ from place to place. And the cultures of the Arabs of those days, the respect and reverence of their forefathers was very huge. So if you told them, come to this deen, and the deen says, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, there is nothing worthy of worship except for one Allah, which means all the other gods are false, that really annoyed him, because what about my father? You know, what did they worship? So, Thumama, burning with anger, even decided he is going to kill the Prophet ﷺ. But his uncle intervened, you know that this is not a normal man you're gonna go and, and attack. Like this is a man whose people hold on to every utterance of. So he refrained from killing the Prophet, like trying to attack the Prophet ﷺ. But nonetheless, he attacked some of the Sahaba and, and some of the Sahaba were hurt and died at his hand. So the Prophet ﷺ, reached a place where he declared him an enemy of Islam and the Muslims and his blood viable. So this is Thumama. And then Subhanallah biyadihi al-maqadir. Thumama decided he is going to go to Umrah. They used to do Umrah before Islam as well in their own style. He's going to do Umrah, sacrifice to the idols and then come back. Around this time, the scouts or the army or a battalion of Islam is going through a similar area the two cross and they capture him. They capture who? Thumama. But they don't know this is Thumama. So they bring him to Medina and they tie him in one of the pillars of the masjid, waiting for the Prophet to give instruction that who is this? First of all, who is your Prophet? Because the Prophet knows. And secondly, what should we do with him? So the Prophet sees him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from afar and he says, do you know who you brought? So they go, no, Allah and his Prophet knows best. So he said, this is Thumama. You know, the one that killed the messenger of the messenger and the one that hurt and killed some of the Ashab. So, and now he is a captive in the heart of Islam, like in the mosque of the Prophet. The door of the house of the Prophet opens into the mosque and other doors open and inside, and inside, this is the city center of Islam. It's tied there. And this is the heart of Islam and the heart of a Prophet. Learn. So the Prophet said, this is Thumama ibn Uthal. So tend to him well, like look after him, make sure he's comfortable. And then he وسلم, went into his own house and he said, prepare some food for Sumama and ordered that in the morning and in the afternoon, the camel should be milked and camel milk should be taken to him. To who? Who did what? Rejected his message, killed his messenger, killed his sahab. So the Prophet wasallam let him be like this and met him a day later. If the Prophet wasallam had gone to Sumama straight away like this, ah, what happened, ah? Huh? 
Remember what you did to you remember what you did to my message. Uh, he could have. So Mama would have responded in the same arrogance that you would expect a Bedouin leader to respond, or he would be scared. There would be no chance of heart change. It would be either fear or anger. So the Prophet ﷺ opened the doors of his heart before he opened the doors of his eyes and ears. Like he conditioned the man to relax, put down his guards, disperse of his fears and anxieties and hatred. Because when he eats your food at your mercy, when he gets a drink at your mercy and he's expecting retribution, naturally he's going to be indebted to you. Like I said all these bad things about this guy, did all the silly things. And here he is milking camels for me to feed me. And he doesn't have to, you know, I'm, I'm a slave, I'm a servant or captive at his, at his mercy. So, and the Prophet waited. So notice, the Prophet obviously wants to finalize this matter. He obviously wants to conclude and, you know, get a closure on this issue. But he holds back. Just feed him, look after him, be hospitable, wait a day, doesn't face to face him in case he says something that is disrespectful. Do you understand me? It creates the climate and ambience acceptable for a successful discussion. And then next day he comes to him and he says, Mada in the man? How are things with you, Uthman? And the adab of the Rasul, because the word has every type of meaning in it. Mada in like how are things, Uthman? You know, if you have the brain of a goldfish, you will look around, you say, game up, I'm at your mercy. You know, instead of saying, what do you want me to do with you? Do you want me to cut you? Do you want me to bash you? Do you want me to make a little piece and send it to mommy? You know, stuff like that. No, it just says, Mada indak ya Sumama, how are things? So Sumama says, and imagine, he's a person in a tribal system. Normal systems are easy because votes, you know. Tribal system, he's become a king. Like this, this personality you're dealing with. So he says, عندي الخير, all good. And then he says, إن تنعم تنعم على شاكر. Listen, O Muhammad, if you be benevolent, you will be benevolent on someone who knows how to be grateful. Like if you decide to be magnanimous, gracious, I know how to be grateful. And إن تقتل تقتل ذا دم. And if you kill, if you decide to kill me, then know that you kill someone who was a person of Vadamin as in a person with lineage and with tribe and with community. Like they will come ask for the compensation of that blood, whether that's by blood or by money. Like killing me is not an easy affair. I have a tribe there. What in Turidil Mal Fasal Mashit. And if you want money, if you want, you know, ransom, ask, it will be granted. The Prophet went Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bi Abi Huwa wa Ummi. Went, prayed, and the hadith of Abu Huraira. He didn't come to him the next day. Then he came the day after. So he's waiting for Sumama to acclimatize, to see the Sahaba, see the characters, see the community. Let the kindness marinate. Let it go into the mind. Let it soak. Let the conditioning happen. Let the man get prepared. And you see the hikmah and knowing psychology and knowing the hearts and minds of men and having this is something we are so alien to these days. So the Prophet wasallam missed a day, came a day after, and asked him the same question again. Mada indak ya Thumam? How are things with you, O Thumam? So Thumam says, like I told you yesterday, in taqtul taqtul dha damin, if you kill, you kill someone whose blood is weighty, who has tribe and lineage, they will come seeking, you know, revenge or compensation. وَإِن تُنْعِمْ تُنْعِمْ عَلَىٰ شَاكِرْ And if you are graceful and gracious and benevolent and magnanimous, then I know how to be grateful. وَإِن تُرِدِ الْمَالْ فَسَلْتُعْتَىٰ مَا شِئْتْ And if you want wealth, ask, it will be granted. So the Prophet left him and went. Now, imagine you, Sumama, what are you thinking? Because you're not there for a minute. You're sitting there, days thinking. You have nothing to do but to think. Because no one's making you farm. You're just sitting. So sitting, what else are you going to do? You're looking and thinking. So then the Prophet ﷺ came for a third time. After this day, the next day. And this is the beauty of mine in your religion. That the record is so particularly accurate. You know, 
they haven't missed the beat. Like we know who told us the story, we know which year it happened, we know which pillar of the mosque he was tied to, we know which day the Prophet spoke to him, we know which day he missed, we know what food he was presented. This is the beauty of this deen because it is from there to us, heart to heart and book to book. So third meeting, the Prophet ﷺ came, asked him, Mada عندك يا ثمامة? How are things? And can you ask yourself, what's the Prophet doing? When you talk to an individual, in the conversation, in the body language, in the eyes, the secrets that words cannot convey. So the Prophet from his demeanor can tell what's happened inside the head and heart of this man. You know, an angry person full of hatred looks different to a person looking at you in awe and splendor. So third day, the Prophet ﷺ asked him, he repeated, he goes, as I told you, all good, but if you kill me, understand my blood is waiting. If you're benevolent and gracious, I know how to be grateful. And if you want wealth, ask, it will be granted. So the Prophet ﷺ said, release, so man. I don't want to make you indebted to me, nor do I want to kill you, nor do I want compensation. Bro. I don't know if you can become Sumama for a second. Like this is a man you've hated. This is a man you fought inside your head. Oh, if I get my hands on you, you know how you talk in your head and you're angry at someone and you're it's talking to you. This is the man who you've attacked his companions. This is the man you plan to kill, all that. And now this man comes, feeds you, hosts you, even orders milk to be brought to you twice a day and then releases you. Like it must be perplexing at, at least, you know, and to the level where you want to shout. So Sumama left the masjid, walked out, went to near the Baqi. There's an orchard there and there was a well. So he took water, washed himself, cleaned himself very well. And because the sun is hot, so you dry up pretty quick or not. So he came a few minutes later back into the masjid, now washed and clean. So Muslims are there, alhamdulillah. So he says, Ya Muhammad, your face was the most hated face to me. Allah has made it the most beloved face to me. Your land was the most hated land to me. Allah has made it the most beloved land to me. Your religion was the most hated religion to me. Allah has made it the most beloved religion to me. I swear, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka la rasulullah. I swear that there is none worthy of worship save Allah and you're the Prophet of God. It is easy to be kind to kindness. A bit better than that is to be kind in a neutral ground. Like, you know, I haven't done anything good for you. You don't know me. You see me in the street carrying a bag. You say, stands, let me help you. That's what I Jazakallah. You are kind to me without having, oh, you know. The challenge is to be kind in the face of unkindness. You know, because every element, every chemical, every cell from the tip of your toe to the top of your head is burning with rage and anger, with revenge and hatred. You want retribution. That's normal. But now, what type of heart must you have that not only have you forgiven, but are being kind and nice as well? And especially, and kind and nice is okay when you're weak, because what else are you going to do? He is tied up in your mosque. Like, he's at your mercy. Mercy here, given his history of what he's done. This is why he is rahmatul lil alam. Do you see? Mercy to your enemies. And such level of mercy, that the mercy kills the, the hatred that is in their heart and turns it to love for you. So Thumama became a Sahabi, became a Muslim, a follower of the Prophet. And he says, from now on, myself, my person, my sword and my men are at your disposal. Like I am, I am yours to command. And then he remembers the wrong he did because he's killed people from the Muslims. So he said, oh Prophet, I, I have killed your men. What do I need to do about that? So the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تثريب عليك اليوم There's no blame on you today. Islam forgives whatever came before it. And the beauty of Islam, that it gives the opportunity for a fresh start. You know, it gives it upon Islam, and it gives it upon Hijrah, and it gives it upon Hajj. Fresh start. So, so Sumama said, O oh Prophet, I was intending to go to Umrah. What should I do about that? So the Prophet said, go to Umrah. But go to Umrah on the tradition of prophethood, on the method of Islam and not on the method of your tribe. So then the Prophet ﷺ taught him 
how to perform the Umrah as a Muslim. And he is the first one that has sung the Talbiyah in the Haram from the Muslims. This is Thumama. And the Quraysh used to say it's similar, but they had words of shirk in this. So Thumama arrived in Mecca to perform Umrah. And he sings out at the top of his voice, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ When the Quraysh heard this, like they know that this is not the, the normal one. So they, they burnt with anger because the Islam that they're fighting and keeping in Medina, and now it is singing inside the Haram in their backyard. You know, بِبَطْنِ مَكَّةَ So the young worked up, and some took their swords and the elderly saw they go, hey, this is Thumama, this is not, you know, your normal person that has come here. There's a whole tribe of Banu Hanifa that will come here if you do anything to him. So they shield the swords and went to him and said, yes, Thumama, what is, what is happening? Have, have you become confused? He says, no, a Muslim, I've become a Muslim. So they say they bashed him a little bit. They enough self-control to keep the swords shielded. Khalas, that's as much as you can expect. They're still going to ruffle a bit. So he said, men of Quraysh, I swear to you, upon my return, not a grain will come to you from that side. Like, and he blocked a whole, a whole side. You know, this is sanctions from Subama, you know, nothing's coming. And again, the sanctions started to bite, you know, produce reduced, wealth reduced. And usually the, the, the weakest suffer the most in sanctions. So the kids and the women and the poor. And the cries eventually reached the Prophet. I am being metaphorical, meaning the complaints, the letters. They sent a letter to the Prophet وسلم, who? The Quraysh, his enemies, to say, Ya Muhammad, although we are of different faiths, we are still family. Now order this friend of yours to remove the sanction because, you know, we, our kids are dying out of anger. And again, the Quraysh people, you know the story of Bilal, you know the story of Ammar, you know the story of Sumayyah, Quraysh did it. And the reason the Prophet migrated because they came behind his house to assassinate him, the Quraysh did it, the same people of Mecca. Then they came to attack him in Badr and then they came to attack him in Uhud and then they came to attack him in Ahzab. The Quraysh did it. Now they are begging for mercy from him that listen, our kids are dying out of hunger. So the Prophet وسلم, and Subhanallah to give you context, in our times sanctions were placed on Iraq. Two million people died and no relief from the sanctions. Yet for the Prophet وسلم, a letter came that our kids are hungry and crying. The Prophet وسلم, ordered Thumama, Thumama, I haven't been sent to, you know, deprive kids of food. I am Rahmatul Lil Alameen, remove your embargo and sanctions. Do you see? Rahmatul Lil Alameen. The verse says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Allah Rabbul Izza didn't say, وَأَرْسَلْنَاكَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He didn't say, and we sent you as a mercy to the world. Allah Rabbul Izza said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Oh Prophet, we have sent you as nothing else but a mercy to the world. Like first, Allah negates all else. Like there's no other component in your mission. إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ but you're a mercy to the world.